For this video, I'm going to demonstrate uh, the scleroderma exam. Um, just to start off, uh, when I do this examination, things that you want to note um, is differentiating between um, diffuse cutaneous uh, systemic cirrhosis or limited cutaneous systemic cirrhosis. And so the defining differentiation with that is whether uh, the skin uh, manifestations are either distal or proximal um, to the elbow. So if they are only distal to the elbow, that's uh, limited cutaneous systemic cirrhosis. With limited cutaneous systemic cirrhosis, um, you do have an existential um, uh, uh, manifestations. Uh, so you'd want to be looking for any kind of crest syndrome as well. So crest syndrome, uh, things to look for is whether there's any kind of calcinosis, any Raynaud's findings, any esophageal dysmotility, any sclerodactyly, and any uh, telangiectasias as well. Moving on from there, OSCE style, I'll introduce myself. Hi, my name's Evan Graham. I'm with Internal Medicine. Do you mind if I do this scleroderma examination on you? Perfect. I go on to wash my hands. I want to make sure that uh, she's vitally stable um, before uh, completing the examination. Doesn't need any kind of uh, uh, urgent medical care. Uh, from there, um, vital signs, things that you can note for. Uh, so you can note any kind of uh, hypoxia or uh, hypoxia or tachypnea from any kind of uh, cardiopulmonary uh, involvement, any kind of hypertension uh, if they have any uh, scleroderma renal crisis. And then uh, you'd also want to just note their BMI and often they have a low BMI from this, uh, uh, this chronic uh, illness. From there, just on inspection, starting off with the head and neck, uh, things that you can note. Uh, so you can note um, some alopecia, alopecia of the hair, on the eyes, um, you can ask them to blink for you. Can you just close your eyes? Perfect. Often with the skin tightening, you actually get um, difficulty closing your eyes and then you can uh, additionally get uh, associated corneal ulcerations. Um, you can note over the face, um, so you'll get tightening of the skin and they also get a, a bird-like kind of uh, deformity. So you'll get puckering of the lips that you can kind of note from the skin tightening. Uh, you can look for malar uh, telangiectasias hyperpigmentation of the skin um, as well. You can rarely, uh, looking in the nose, get um, uh, nasal perforations. And then from the skin tightening, you'd wanna see how much they can open up their mouth. So often they have an inability to open their mouth. So if you can just open your mouth really wide for me. The incisor uh, distance should be greater than three centimeters. Um, and a gross way to measure that is you can ask them to put three fingers vertically within their mouth. And if they can fit three fingers within their mouth, um, then that's a, a normal finding. If they can't, then that'll be a positive finding for uh, scleroderma. Lastly, just looking at the neck, um, you can see some tightening of the skin all along the neck tissue here and any kind of muscle wastage as well. Moving on to the extremities. So the extremities where the bulk of the findings will be with scleroderma. Things that you want to note um, is if, if there's any kind of calcinosis, which is calcium uh, subcutaneous calcium deposits. Um, in there that you can feel that are palpable as well. Um, you can look for Raynaud's, uh, which is a lack of blood flow to the tips of the fingers um, when they're exposed to cold, which can cause, result in pallor. Um, they can have cyanosis as well. And uh, rarely you can actually get, um, if they're really severe, um, you can get ischemia and necrosis as well, at the digital tips and some ulcerations as well, at the digital tips. The fingernail beds, you can look for um, any kind of periungal, um, uh, periungal uh, capillary loop dilations as well. Um, and so these capillary loops, uh, they're extremely difficult to see with the naked eye. So what you'd want to get is actually a dermatoscope or you can use oil and uh, ophthalmoscope as well to look um, just um, proximal to where the nail bed goes into the skin. There's capillary beds there and you can look for uh, the dilation of the loops as well. Um, from there, just looking at the palms, um, so you can see any kind of contractures that you get, any scleral dactyly, so you get tightening of the skin that pulls on, you end up getting a tapering of the fingers uh, at the end as well, and a chronic kind of contractures there as well. You can look for muscle wastage um, along here. Um, you can see associated kind of arthropathies as well. Um, individuals, when they initially get uh, scleroderma, you'll get associated edema, and the edema in the beginning will be pitting in nature, and then afterwards it progresses to a non-pitting. You'll want to assess the skin for thickening, um, and you'll want to feel the skin thickening and tightness all the way up, so you shouldn't be able to actually make wrinkles within the skin here. It actually doesn't wrinkle because it's so thick, and you'll go up and you'll assess for how high up um, the involvement will be. 
Other things that you can note along here, um, so you can note any kind of vitiligo or, or hypopigmentation. You'll get commonly hyperpigmentation all along here. Uh, again, you can see more uh, hair loss um, uh, as well. And then you want to uh, feel the joints when you move along with here, and often you can get catching of the tendons uh, as well um, uh, with uh, scleroderma. Moving on from there, um, uh, chest examination. So just uh, inspecting the chest, the chest wall, it'll often get uh, a Roman breastplate uh, kind of deformity or appearance. Um, and so from all the skin tightening, it makes the, the rib spaces a lot more prominent. That is very similar to what a Roman breastplate kind of looks like. So you can note that. Um, on auscultation, so you can auscultate and palpate um, for the heart. Um, so findings that you'd find with the heart. So commonly with scleroderma, you'll get pulmonary hypertension. So a gross screening exam, which you'd want to feel for is you'd want to feel for a palpable P2 up here with your, the tips of your fingers, and then also an RV heave. And so you use actually the heel of your hand pushing down here, and you can feel the um, heart is moving up. If you suspect it, you can do a full pulmonary hypertension exam and also a, a, a heart failure exam as well, but for sake of time, I won't demonstrate it on this video. Other things that you want to listen for uh, with the heart. So you want to note if there's any kind of uh, pericardial friction rubs from any kind of pericarditis that you can get and any uh, decreased heart sounds uh, that could suggest any kind of pericardial effusion. With um, the lung examination, when you're listening to the lungs, things you want to note. So you want to note if there's any kind of uh, fibrotic changes, so um, early inspiratory crackles kind of throughout. If there's decreased air entry to the bottom with dullness to percussion to suggest any kind of uh, pleural effusions. And then you can sometimes get areas of crackles um, just from uh, uh, regurgitation pneumonitis as well. That's commonly associated with the, uh, the esophageal disc motility. La um, moving on from there, uh, abdominal wise, you can just feel the stomach kind of throughout. And I would normally do this with her lying down. And only thing that you'd really be looking for if there's any kind of soft masses uh, that you can get, uh, commonly get constipation from the bowel disc motility. Lastly, I would just uh, assess proximal muscle strength. So if you could just hold your arms up for me like this, perfect. And if you can stand up with your, just your legs, perfect. And so often you can get a proximal muscle um, myopathy as well associated with scleroderma. Uh, and that concludes my scleroderma examination.